Hi guys, welcome to the first official video for our new YouTube channel, Wanderfish, The Adventures of Matt, Val, Henny, and Ernie. I'm Matt. And I'm Valerie. And we decided to start thinking outside of the box by living in a box on wheels. So we want to kind of go over how we decided to live full time, what we did to get to this point, some of the decisions we made to get here. So, how should we start? We've had our RV since May 1st of 2017. 2017. Prior to that, um, we were out geocaching one day. That's our big hobby. We were in a recreation area in um, a town about an hour's drive from our um, apartment and we had the most amazing time um, hiking that day that just so happens that all the way around the lake uh, there was a series of over a hundred caches I think it was like 200 caches 200, yeah. and there's hiking trails that go all the way around it and really the only way you could be able to get all that done in like one weekend would be if you were actually like staying out at the park campground. We spent the first day there and hiked and then had to drive back home and then got up the next morning to go back out there and I think it was the second day where some of the geocaches actually took us along the edge of the campground and I saw people there in campers and tents and I thought wow wouldn't it be neat if because again, it would we were, be so much easier. It would be so much easier if we could, we're camping here, and then when we were done camping, we could just come back to our, our tent, and and. It would save us an hour each way. Yeah, and and we could enjoy being outdoors, which we do anyway, and. Matt kind of had different, ideas about it. I spent, about five years in the military and infantry and. That's all we did was sleep outside, and I told her I did that for years. I have no desire to sleep outside on the ground anymore. I didn't want anything to do with it. In fact, um, he didn't want to have anything to do with it so much that he said, instead of doing that, why don't we start checking into maybe purchasing an RV, a camper? I thought he was crazy, and I have to say on camera, you were right. Mm -hmm. because Yeah, her excuse was... We don't need to spend all that money. We just need to buy a tent. That'd be crazy to go out and spend the money that you would take to buy a camper. Instead, let's go out and spend several thousand dollars on top of the line, on a top of the line tent, all the equipment that goes with it, all the tent gear. Well, we're huge reviewers. <laughs> so we spent weeks before that researching and watching videos and trying to figure out which one is the best tent and the longest lasting and the best quality so we actually went to a popular outfitter rei and we bought a it was a great tent it was nice it was a super nice tent we uh, spent the garage that goes with the, yeah. the the sleeping bags the sleeping pads the cooler i'll the, put up a video we're going to have a new playlist uh that's going to be called be before ernie um we have a video of the tent and you'll see you know everything that we purchased well we from. went crazy we we in fact had so much stuff in our SUV that we had to buy a hitch haul that hooks into where your receiver hitch is the first yeah when we were packing <laughs> to be able to we were packing get all of our weekend. stuff out there we were packing up the vehicle for the weekend and we could not get everything in there and Matt had to go take our other vehicle to Walmart because we'd seen the hitch haul before and we thought about getting and we went oh no it all fit he had to go buy it. it uh, put it together and hook it up before we could even go on our first camping trip. So that we could put our cooler on it and I don't remember what other stuff, but everything Cooler's would not yeah. fit inside the SUV. So, but we we thoroughly enjoyed tent camping. We really did. We enjoyed, we even all the work that goes into it, setting it up and um, taking it Well, it just it makes down. you feel good that that's what you did, you know, that you... You're sleeping in the place that you put in all the hard work to get set up and ready to roll. We And we had a blast. We loved it. The problem is, we live in Kansas. We live in Kansas, and 
The first two weekends were great. Uh, the second weekend we got rained on and we were not going to let that stop us. Um, we had to go to bed early that night. We did sit outside. Um, we weren't going to go down without a fight. We, sat we out. made a, a makeshift lean-to that we sit underneath with a fire. We sat under, rain. yep. It was pouring rain and then eventually it just, it, the rain won and it even put our campfire out and I said, okay, well, let's just go to bed early. So we went to bed early and it was actually really peaceful to hear the rain, um, you know, hitting the, the top of the tent. And uh, we thought, you know, we can handle this. The problem is, since we live in Kansas, we also uh, have severe weather. We get hail, we get crazy wind, and uh, tornadoes. And the next few weekends... Well, even not even so much the severe, it's just a, a normal 40 mile an hour wind here is... Can, is enough to take a tent out. You're right, it is. And it's, it's not abnormal to have winds like that for long period you know days and so for the next two to three weekends we were planning on going camping and it was talking about rain and heavy winds and and it sucked and it, it really stunk you know here we spent thousands and thousands of dollars on all this camping equipment we can't use so we went back to the idea of well if we had an rv maybe we could go camping you know if it rained a little bit no big deal if it had a little bit of hail no big deal you know a little wind we're okay with any of that. Uh, so the research began again. <laughs> Matt would research at work. I would research at work. We essentially spent every free minute we had of free time researching. And I would find ones that I liked and Matt would find ones that he liked. And then we'd save our videos. And then at the end of the day, we would watch the videos together. We would each have a laptop sitting on the couch. and. She'd watch videos, I'd watch videos, and then we'd have lists of, oh, we really like this about certain things, or we don't like this, or this is something we need, this is something that we can live without. Okay. And we have a, a midsize SUV, so we were very limited on it had to be what we could get because of weight-wise. Weight-wise, weight-wise, and, and size. so that really yeah. narrowed it down. But even, even with those restrictions, you know, price range weight rating, um, even with those types of restrictions, we still ended up having an initial list of 14 different possibilities, and then we narrowed that down to four. To four, yeah. Um, but what we did was we found, did we look well, we, at all 14? We get a list, and we had about 14 models that we really liked mm -hmm. and wanted to check out. So then we would look at those models and try to search for RV dealerships somewhere close that would have a few of those models. And we did. And then we'd go to that RV dealership, we'd look at them in person, and that's one thing you need to realize if you're looking at a camper or possibly thinking of buying one. Don't buy them sight unseen. Just because they look pretty online or because they look pretty on a video, look at them in person. Because that's how our list got narrowed down so quickly was because when you really, when you see them on the video, they look beautiful and they have all these features. And when you go look at them in person and you really start looking at them, you, you can see the difference in quality and workmanship. workmanship, and you can definitely tell some of them are just, let's get them off the assembly line as fast as possible. Yeah. And that's how we really narrowed ours down, was we were willing to give up uh, the size of the camper and space of the camper for quality. Uh, we were willing to spend a little bit more than you would for a, a camper maybe a little bit bigger to know that we have something that's going to last a long time and not give us problems. In the end, um, we actually ended up going with the very first one that we saw, um, which is a Winnebago. And we have, an, on our playlist, we have several videos that are specific to our camper. Um, we found one initially that Matt was negotiating on in Iowa? Or uh, Ohio. In Ohio, in Ohio. And we were planning on taking the weekend trip uh, to go purchase that one. Um, the specific line of camper that we are in actually has some pretty crazy colors and we have a pretty crazy color vehicle. I think the official color name is Tango Ma Mango, Mango Tango. Tango. Mango Tango. It's, uh, the reason we call our tow vehicle Penny is because in the bright sun, she's really kind of copper colored like a penny, like a, shiny penny, like a shiny penny. So we call her Penny. Um, 
Well, Winnebago, the Micro Mini model, which is what we ended up getting, actually has an orange uh, version. And we thought, oh my God, wouldn't that just be awesome that we had a matching a vehicle that uh, matched our camper or a camper that matched our vehicle. Um, but then when we got to negotiating, we looked online on, what is that, RV, find, yeah, RV, RV Trader. Trader. Uh, we looked at online forever dealerships, dealerships and, and nobody had that color. And then just as we were getting, I think it was the Thursday before well, uh, I we I think left. it was earlier in the week. We were planning Maybe on Wednesday. leaving that Friday for the thing. And it just so happens, I just did a search one more time at work, and we found an orange one in Dothan, Alabama, which is about 1,100 miles from home. Entirely across the country. So So then I called him, and we started negotiating online. We got it all taken care of and planned to head down that weekend and pick it up. And so we, we switched from going from Ohio to Alabama. Yep. And, and so we drove down there. And, and in hindsight, what we did was really stupid. Very stupid. We, we drove cross-country, really, I mean, 1,100 miles. It was a three-day weekend, so we spent the first day getting down there, and we had to wait for the dealership to open, and then, then we did the walkthrough. And we drove down on Friday, right? Yeah, because we, drove, we got there at Saturday, Saturday morning. Uh, yeah, we got there early Saturday morning. Uh, and we were out of there by 1? By 1, and we still had 1,100 miles to go, and we had to be back by Monday morning at 7. So we drove just a, a, no. a couple hundred miles. You know. We had to be back on Tuesday. Yeah, and so we had to drive a couple hundred miles the first day, and then uh, the second day we drove the whole way. And we probably shouldn't have. That was that was kind of stupid with us being so inexperienced. And uh, it worked out, but you know, I wouldn't recommend that you do that. Matt does have some towing experience, right? And, but he's he's driven and pulled a trailer in the past, right? So it it wasn't something totally new to us. But the whole camping experience and pulling a camper was. Yeah. Uh, I, we definitely were creeping along on the highway, probably. And oh, yeah, we were. But And then the, to make matters worse, it was flooding that weekend. That's right. And, and so we had we had to take a detour. Keep getting detoured because of the, the floods. Highways the highways were flooding. highways. Missouri, Arkansas, it was horrible and yeah. so scary. But We finally we, made it back. We made it back in one piece. And as soon as we got back, the first thing we had to do was put the camper in storage because we had to get back to work. So we put the camper in storage, and that Friday, right away, we made reservations at the nearest campground, um, actually on the opposite side of the lake from the nearest campground for us, which is about a half hour drive from our apartment at the time. And we took it there and had a great time, um, had to learn you know, how everything worked, and I think we camped again that weekend out there. We skipped a weekend in between because it was, I don't know, something else came up. And then on Memorial Day weekend, we went to uh, our a different a town, different a town. local lake in our a closer town. Yeah, a local lake uh, in a different town um, that is actually only five minutes away from, the campground's only five minutes away from where my parents live. And Matt's parents had a camper at that time. And they came out and we had a great Memorial Day weekend with everybody. Everyone came out. We had a big All the picnic, family came out and had a big Had picnic. a great time. Um, it was that weekend. We came back home. We, we came home. We spent we, the weekend there, and we came back home, and we put the, the camper in storage, which happens to be the storage is literally right at the entrance to the, the state, state park, park campground. campground that is about eight minutes from our former apartment. Right, and so we put it, the camper away. We headed home. Uh, we got supper, and we sit there, and we were we talking were about how sad we were that we had to put the camper away, and it's going to be another week. So we get that because we really fell in love with the whole camper life and and we looked at each other and said well why do we have to put it away you know so uh, it the campground is literally right by our apartment uh we we commute to our jobs anyway why can't we commute from there excuse me <laughs> so we uh that's what we did we literally went back out that night and hooked back up that night and came out to the campground and set up and yeah we ended up staying there uh, all week long. So we purchased our camper on May 1st of 2017. I would say, I think it was around June 20th is when we decided we didn't want to go back to the apartment. I mean, every time we would go back to the apartment, we would sit in the apartment and look around and be like, why do we have all this stuff? You know, I mean, 
it, 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 we spent more time in the camper than with you. The, yeah, the and the camper immediately felt like home to us. And I don't know, we that was when we really started thinking, I wonder if we could live in the camper full time. Well, well just we had, we had spent a good deal of our time before buying the camper uh, looking for a house. And we looked for new constructions. Uh, for years. Uh, a fixer-upper condos for years yeah for I mean, years that we would go to open houses and we could never find that one thing we were looking for there we was liked always our something apartment. wrong with it yeah and so then when we found the camper we thought well this is it you know that's it, our problem it's not about it's not about the house it's about location 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 put it. if we had a house on wheels which we already have we could go wherever we wanted whenever we wanted and, and a little light came on and we went i wonder if we can do that the problem is our lease was going to be up that following month uh, july end, of, end of july end of july this was already mid-june and i was like there's no way we're going to be able to well, do this i think this. i threw that out to valerie that hey we we're staying pretty much in the camper every night anyway mm -hmm. why are we going to spend the money on uh, uh, an apartment that we really all we use it for is a laundry facility and i said why don't we just not sign a lease let's just uh move into the camper and i freaked kinda, out a little she bit she kind of looked at me like i just grew through a third eyeball or something and i did told me i was insane well i don't i don't think i was opposed to the idea as much as how are we going to get rid of all of our stuff wasn't so much fast. the idea it was just doing it that quickly and, and i just thought there's no we were going to be so stressed out that it was going to be awful and i'm and we really only had the camper for about two months at that time so we were so new at all of it and we thought well what happens if six months down the line we're like okay we're sick of this so we decided if we're going to do it let's take the next year we went ahead and signed our lease we thought we'd take the next year and see is it possible is this doable and so we, especially because of the climate we right. live we live in kansas and we have four serious seasons Spring and fall, I wasn't worried about, but summer and winter can really beat you up. Even if you live in a, even if you live in a sticks and bricks house out here, we get crazy winters. Right now, I think it's maybe ten degrees outside. Yeah, ten degrees. It was about minus seventeen wind chill this morning. Yeah, it's, it's March third. Yeah, and it's not unusual for summer to be a uh, hundred degrees plus mm -hmm. for weeks on end with the high humidity. So I knew that. If we were going to do it, we needed to have, I needed to have the peace of mind to know that we could survive four seasons, that we could survive year round in Kansas, uh, living in a box on wheels that is not meant to be lived in full time. I mean, a lot of people do this, and I think that that's one thing that everybody should keep in mind is no matter how well built an RV is, if you take a home and you put wheels on it and you drive it down, the road it's it's not gonna be built as well as a house and and they can say oh it's meant to be lived in it's really not the same thing and I think as right. long as you keep that in mind and know that there are modifications that need to be made especially if you live in an extreme climate modifications and upgrades and well there's changes. A, a lot of them out there they'll say for seasons and the arctic package and the, the heat package and what people they they do help. They're, everything that you can do is a benefit to you, but you also have to be realistic with, and realize that, yes, it is, but when you're at 10 degrees and it's minus 17 degree wind chill, an Arctic package isn't going to do it for you. You you have to do other have to take extra measures like skirting and heating, you know, at maybe adding some heat lamps or a, an electric heater underneath some way to blow some heat underneath and keep it skirted and maybe not just with vinyl skirting but something a little more insulated if you're in such extreme temperatures for long periods of time um, and we have some uh, we have a YouTube uh, playlist we have a playlist uh, that is about winter camping and the modifications that we've made to our camper to be able to survive it um, summertime we're able to get by um, because we are we have a really good air conditioner in right. our camper and uh, if you're in the shade um, that helps a lot that's really all you can do in addition to 
you know, blocking the sun from coming in to your camper as well to keep the heat out. Um, but in the winter, you really got to take some extra measures here uh, to keep. It's your, a little bit of work. Yeah, and it you is. Just, you just it is doable. It just it needs to be realistic, and you need to be prepared and uh, get yourself ready for it. And so, so that's what we ended up doing, and mm -hmm. and we survived. We and survived. So we, we we made it through the four seasons, and uh, that spring, after we made it through winter, it was I think it was in March when we started selling our furniture. We sold everything uh, through Facebook Marketplace, with the exception of just a few special items that just weren't going. Um, we ended up selling um, that stuff on Craigslist, and but we were able to basically get rid of. All of we it. We literally sold everything that we were trying to sell. Yeah, I mean, I mean, from a full set of dishes, we sold all our silverware. We already had a set of stuff in the in the uh, RV for that. We had our own cookware in the RV for that. So we we got rid of all of our stuff and uh, our lease expired, and then we moved out here full time. And moved out here full time. We uh, lucked into a position at our local state park for well, a a gate booth attendant to, before that to live out here uh, in this particular park they do something called flip-flopping there are two different campgrounds and you can stay up to 14 days in one campground with a minimum of five days in between which I think is fairly standard to most state campgrounds that uh, they don't want you there extended times and so they put a time limit on it generally it's 14 days within a 30-day period and that's what we were doing um, the, uh, through the first winter, they have a special out here where if you stay out here during the winter months, you can reserve a spot for 30 days at a time, and you have to move once every 30 days. You don't have to flip-flop different campgrounds. You can only you can stay in just the one campground if you like, um, but you do have to move once every 30 days. So that's what we did. We signed up for that. Um, you prepay, which is was not a problem. Um, we prepaid and we got through the winter and you kind of have to do that with your skirting and all that stuff. Um, then it was in, I think it was in May, late May when we went up to the office for something and Matt saw a sign on the door that said they were looking for a gate host and the hours seemed like they would work with our schedule and um, there was one hour difference where we didn't think we, they wanted it from three to 3 p.m. to 10 p.m. on Saturdays. And the problem is Matt works on Saturdays and doesn't get off work until 3. Um, so, uh, and we told her that, well, we'd love to do it, but we can't because Matt works Saturdays until 3, and that's a couple's position. And I was going to offer, well, I could be out at the gate at 3, and then Matt could just show up. And she said, well, let's see if we can work with you. And they arranged to, to uh, change the hours for us to work four to ten so we started that um last so we just started working the gate and yep. it in in exchange for that it gave us a spot to where we didn't have to move it's mm -hmm. a, a full hookup spot uh, without the sewer and it, it gives us a chance to stay in one spot without having to flip-flop like we did before uh, which is the, our ultimate goal for when we retire is to work camp, work camp all throughout the united states and basically chase the weather so we were our, mainly interested yeah, in that position just to start gaining just the experience just to get the experience of work camping so that we could kind of start building up a resume early so that when we do retire at this point we're looking at about eight years from now um hopefully sooner we're still checking into that um, but the plan is right now about eight years from now so we wanted to gain the experience to build up a good resume and it's worked out it's worked out great worked out so we did it for three uh, two seasons now get starting our third season so uh, that is another benefit for us is uh, uh, it it saves on the uh, the cost and it gives us the experience and it's just another thing to check into if you're ever thinking of doing a full-time mm -hmm. full-time life and when the weather's nice we eat outside we get to sit by the campfire and really um this is the best of both worlds we just can't retire and hit the road yet but we can enjoy our lifestyle we um save a lot of money by living this way we're saving about 
What'd you say? Fourteen to fifteen hundred dollars a month, um, and that money is going to pay some debt, and then uh, also build up our savings, and uh, you know we'll be able. That's what's going to afford us to be able to retire early. At the latest, we'll be fifty-four so we when just, we retire. We know we make the sacrifices now, so we can enjoy the benefits later, and we're okay. Yeah. Yeah, and we'll talk about the sacrifices later. We'll um, have an upcoming video probably next week about just what 126 square feet of living space really is like and how we make that work for us. Um, and we hit the road as often as we can. So just because we're stationary right now doesn't mean we're stationary all the time. We use up every drop of vacation time that we can to hit the road and explore and take our home with us. We'll have uh, more videos coming up. Uh, Valerie uploads them on, on Sunday Sundays. for sure. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, uh, critiques, suggestions, we, we appreciate all of it. Uh, if you have any suggestions or any questions about uh, other topics that we could do videos for, we'd be happy to answer your questions. We're, uh, like we said before, we have experience, but we're by no means experts. Uh, we learn as you go, just like everybody else. We've had our uh, definite pitfalls that we've uh, had to overcome, and everybody will, you know. Uh, and this life isn't for everyone, uh, but it works perfect for us. So be sure to subscribe, and like our videos, share them if you'd like, and uh, come back and watch us again next week. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.